story uh, was written by myself uh, for Green State yeah. this morning. Um, and it's going back to the topic, probably one of the favorite topics of discussion in this panel, on guns and cannabis consumers. So judges keep calling this policy unconstitutional. Why does it still stand? Let's find out. Weed legalization may be spreading across the nation, but it comes with limits. One of the most talked about is the ongoing federal ban on ownership of guns by cannabis consumers. Potential gun buyers must affirm they are not an, quote, unlawful user of or addicted to marijuana, unquote, on purchase applications. Despite cannabis being legal in the majority of states, the fact that it remains a Schedule One substance means that any weed user who possesses a firearm is breaking federal law. However, that policy could soon be upended after yet another appeals court deemed it unconstitutional. As first reported by Marijuana Moment, an appeals court panel in Texas ruled in favor of a woman who had been charged with federal crimes. Paola Connolly, whom the, court, whom the court referred to as a nonviolent marijuana smoking gun owner, became the subject of an investigation after officers responded to a domestic dispute finding her in possession of a pistol as her husband brandished a shotgun. In their ruling, the appeals court panel said that restrictions on an intoxicated person carrying a firearm is one thing, but they should not extend beyond that. Quote, the short of it is that our history and tradition may support some limits on a presently intoxicated person's right to carry a weapon, the opinion read, but they do not support disarming a sober person based solely on past substance, substance usage. The panel compared cannabis to alcohol, saying the government does not restrict drinkers from possessing guns. They also pushed back on the idea that marijuana users are more dangerous than non-users, a claim the feds have used to justify their ban. The Justice Department has also argued that cannabis causes mental illness and that pot smokers are less likely to store their firearms safely. The ruling is in line with the 2023 appeals court decision. The three-judge panel threw out the conviction of a man sentenced to four years in prison for possessing a half gram of cannabis and two guns. They declared that a policy of disarming an individual for getting high or drunk at some point in their lives is not in line with the Second Amendment. Quote, throughout American history, laws have regulated the combination of guns and intoxicating substances, but at no point in the 18th or 19th century did the government disarm individuals who used drugs or alcohol at one time for possessing guns at another, the ruling read. As judges continue to rule the federal ban on firearm ownership for cannabis consumers unconstitutional, it's possible the policy could soon see, soon see a radical change. And if cannabis were to become Schedule 3 or decriminalized entirely, many wonder if people currently convicted of nonviolent crimes relating to weed and gun possession could see their cases reversed, or at the very least, millions of Americans who consume cannabis may have their right to bear arms reinstated. Jason, I'm sure you have a lot to say about this. Mm -hmm. They the whole Hunter Biden case, being on crack cocaine, mm -hmm. even Republicans agreed that that was not fair. What do you have to say about this? I mean, I, I, I want to see this go to the go to the go to the Supreme Court. Um, I mean, we, we we had a victory here in California in regards with uh, with uh, law enforcement having to prove what actually um, addicted to marijuana is and how much um, that actually constitutes as far as consuming on a regular basis. And they basically just said, if you even smoke once, then that constitutes that. And everyone knows that that's just totally ridiculous. Even, even people that don't smoke can understand that. Um, so, so I, I, I think, I think the way to go is, is, is through the courts and yes, there's major, major hypocrisy, but we are seeing a couple of different pockets of democracy that are pushing back on this. And so time will tell about it's got to go through the courts. That's the only way I see anything happening, any movement on this, because the old guard is not going to shift their mindset on this. The court has, has announced that it's going to go clear back to 1791 mm -hmm. and take a look at how guns were restricted over the history. And there is no historical precedence for taking guns away for people who have used any substance. Mm -hmm. Okay, just I mean, if you were shit faced drunk, it may take your gun away, but give it back to you as soon as you sobered up. So I'd really like to get this in front of the Supreme Court. As much as people like to complain the Supreme Court's become too conservative, this is one of those areas where I think that this court will um, go back and read the Constitution mm -hmm. and apply 
reasonable language and history to our current drug law, I mean, gun laws, and see if we can undo some of this nonsense that's been imposed upon us over the last, say, 50 years. That's when this all started. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. And, and that is very, very interesting uh, point you, po you point out there, Dale, that there that throughout all of uh, American history, that there has never been a substance of consumption that they have banned the use of firearms for. No. That is. No. And this is this is in the last, say, 30 years or so. Well, mm -hmm. actually, I think when <clears throat> when the Black Panther showed up with guns. And white folks' sphincters tightened up quite a yep. bit. We started to yep. see a lot of movement towards, um, you know, restricting gun rights for people. The felon thing came in. Mm -hmm. And then when the Controlled Substance Act was passed, that's another reason they thought of to restrict people from having gun rights. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's just there's no history of this in our country. As much as people don't want um, the Second Amendment to be expanded, um, it exists. Yeah. If you don't like it, then there's a way to fix it. You go and amend the Constitution. Yeah. Okay. If you don't like the Second Amendment, it's pretty straightforward. You know, it says you can't make any laws. So we've got a whole shitload of them. Let's start dismantling some of yes. this legacy of restrictions on people being able to arm themselves mm -hmm. and for felonies too. I mean, this this all came about to target the radicals and the blacks in the 1960s, and it's just been taken on steroids now. And Hunter Biden, who's a, the son of a rich white dude, you know, challenged some of the thinking here and made people really question, you know, mm -hmm. is this something we should be doing? I mean, if you're actively addicted to a substance, there should be a definition of what that means because they can't really agree. To it. And addicted to weed? I mean, come on. You know, teenagers are addicted to spanking their monkey. It doesn't mean you should take their guns away. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I oh, mean, my. I mean, I mean, technically. It, so, uh, so with, without, with, uh, you know, I'm choosing my words carefully here. Mm -hmm. So I tread don't, lightly. So I don't attack uh, a certain uh, faction of political leanings. Mm -hmm. um, um, what, is, what do you guys think it'll take for an actual amendment to be made to the Constitution these days? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I don't think that's going to happen. I don't. I, I don't. I don't think I don't think they can do it. I mean, because Republicans don't don't want it. Democrats are the only ones you said that it. want it. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's awesome. awesome. Well, it's designed to be difficult to do. I mean, our mm -hmm. Constitution requires that you take into consideration the smaller states and give them equal weight to the larger states in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And and if you go out to the states, each one of them gets a vote. And there's a whole lot of states in the interior of this country that are going, you know, we kind of like our guns. We don't want you taking them away. And we're okay with this right now. So I would say it's difficult and not impossible. But, hey, if you don't like the Second Amendment, there is a way constitutionally to fix it. Yeah. Um, it's just it's an uphill climb. You know, Dale, I, I agree with that with, with that logic all the way, except for one state, except for one state. And that's Rhode Island, because they only have one member of Congress and two senators. Well, they've been a pain in the ass since the Constitutional Convention. So <laughs> you have to take them with a large grain of salt. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shout out to Pa Tucket. Mm -hmm. Man, pa shout, Tucket, yeah. shout out to the Second Amendment. Well, I can tell you, they took away my guns, okay? Mm -hmm. And, and they shouldn't irritate have. the shit out of me. And, and I can't get them back. My, my kids all have them, so if something crazy happened, they'd come help take care of me. But, you know, I can shoot pretty good. I had a concealed weapons permit. Mm -hmm. And then when they busted me for smoking weed, they were all taken away. And it's just, it's, it irritates the shit out of me because there's crazy people out there. And some of them right. don't like me. I mean, I've been able to speak my piece. Okay. When they start, and when so they you can just red ass if you don't like what I have to say. What? And I, my family and myself have been threatened with death on cases I've handled. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's why I carried a gun. Dale, Those crazy sons are still out there. When did they start yeah. taking uh, uh, guns away from uh, um, from uh, uh, people who have been to prison or, or federal uh, felons, I should say? Well, it was the gun. It was the Gun Act of 1968, I believe, 68. 
uh, the federal gun law came into place. And that was, you know, sort. Of, it's hard to separate that from the Black Panther showing up to give away food strapped with, with um, military style weapons. That scared the shit out of people here in California. Ronald Reagan was the governor and he shit Twinkies over that. And they <laughs> started right away to tighten those, those, lo those laws up. And you can go back and trace it. It was definitely racially motivated what they did. Mm -hmm. And so was the Controlled Substance Act. You know, they, they made heroin illegal to go after blacks and marijuana illegal to go after the, you know, the war protesters. And it, you can trace it back and it's right there. It's in front of you if you want to look at it and see. So These Ronald, do not Ronald have a good Reagan, legacy to them. They need to go away. Mm -hmm. so Ronald Reagan was all about uh, deregulating everything tied to capitalism, but taking away the rights to our guns and drugs. Uh, I'm not well, and he also right. emptied out all the insane asylums, and the other ones sleeping on the goddamn streets right that, now. That, that is that is one criticism that I think is fair of, of for, for for Ronald Reagan is 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 that I think I think that, that that was that was a big mistake on on their part on doing that, and that's it's, it's yeah. one of the thing. It was the main thing, main catalyst that that really has has led to the homeless epidemic that we see throughout our country now, even though it's you know magnified by a thousand percent. But uh, so is that so you think that's what uh, Donald Trump is talking about when he when he's saying that they're letting out everybody in the same no, he just doesn't want. No, America to that's not. Down. No, that's not what he's talking about. We're going to go to our next commercial and we're going to be right back.